Hi there, year two. Welcome to your last maths lesson on time. You've all done so, so well with your learning. I know it's tricky, OK? As I've said before, I think it's actually one of the trickiest things to teach. OK, so you're all, you've all done so well, particularly if you're doing this at home and you might not have a clock to work with. We're really, really proud of you all, OK? As I said, if you're still finding time a little bit difficult, don't worry. We will be reviewing this throughout the year, OK? So the key word is yet. If you're saying I don't quite get it, it's I don't quite get it yet. OK, you will do, I promise. OK, so what we're going to be doing today is just recapping all of what we've done in time, really. You've got a worksheet to complete where it talks about some of the key facts we know about time. You will need to write the time down from looking at an analog clock. You're going to need to draw the time. And also, if you can, calculate a duration. So before we start, though, let's recap some of our own learning. Who can tell me how many hours there are in a day? How many hours there are in a day? Talk to your partner and then tell me through the computer. Well, well done if you said 24 hours. There are 24 hours in the day. Remember, our day starts at midnight. That is when the new day starts, 12 a.m., also called midnight, and 24 hours will pass until the next day starts, OK? And as we spoke about, because of that, OK, there's 12 hours on the analog clock. That means the hour hand must go around the clock twice. We spoke about there being two one o'clocks, two two o'clocks, OK? There's one o'clock in the morning and there's one o'clock in the afternoon. There's eight o'clock in the morning and eight o'clock in the evening okay and depending if it's morning or evening or morning or afternoon we might be doing different activities we do certain activities at certain times such as we wake up at around seven o'clock in the morning or maybe eight o'clock in the morning okay but we go to bed at seven or eight o'clock in the evening okay so that's really important who can tell me how many minutes there are in one hour how many minutes there are in one hour? OK, talk to your partners and then tell me through the computer. Well, well done if you said there were 60 minutes in one hour. OK, 60 minutes is equal to one hour. If I went for a 60 minute run on Wednesday and I went for an hour run on Tuesday, the following Tuesday, both those runs were the same amount of time. 60 minutes is equal to one hour. If they're on a scales, they would be balanced, okay? 60 minutes is equal to one hour. And we can see here, there are 60 minute marks going around the clock on the outside, okay? And we know each hour number, the jump on the hour scale, is equal to what five minutes would be using the minute hand. So look, moving my long minute hand, five minutes from there to there, five minutes from here to here. Each jump on the hour scale for the minute hand is equal to an increase of five minutes, okay? So when the minute hand points from directly at the five here to directly on the six going clockwise, it's been an increase of five minutes, okay? So really well done. That's some of our basics to do with time. What I'm looking at the clock here, who can tell me what time I have made here. How do you know? How do you know? Big, big question there. How do you know? Pause the, the video and then tell your partner or tell me how do you know what the time is? Well, well done if you said two o'clock. How do I know it's two o'clock? Well, the long minute hand's pointing directly at the 12, and whenever that happens, it's always an o'clock time. So it's o'clock, but what o'clock time it is? Well, the hour hand is pointing directly at the two. It is two o'clock. And remember year two, the hour hand will only point directly at an hour number on the hour scale when it's an o'clock time, when that minute hand is pointing at the 12, okay? That's the only time the hour hand points directly at a number is when the minute hand points directly at the 12, okay? minute hand pointing directly at the 12, I know the hour hand will be pointing directly at a number. And it is the four. This would show 
well, it does show four o'clock. Okay, who can help me out with this time here? Where is he going to start? Dun, 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 dun. What time have I represented? What time have I shown here? Pause the video if you need to. Talk to your partners, talk to a cuddly toy, and then tell me through the computer. Brilliant. I heard some fabulous answers there. Okay. Well, I know when the minute hand's pointing directly at the six, it's going to be half past. Okay. It will be half past the hour. But half past what hour? Okay. Well, the hour hand is between the nine and the ten. And when I talk about times that are past the hour, I choose the smaller hour number. Therefore, it's half past nine. Well done if you said half past nine. Who can help me out here? Tricky, tricky. Who can help me out here? Talk to your partners and then tell me through the computer. Pause the video now if you need more time. Well, well done if you said quarter past 11. How did I know it was quarter past 11? Well, I know whenever the minute hand is pointing directly at the three, it will be quarter past, okay? Quarter past. Some of you may have said 15 minutes past, and that is exactly the same time, okay? Quarter past just means 15 minutes past. You might have gone, well, the minute hand's pointing to the right-hand side, so it's past the hour. How many minutes? Counting five from 12 clockwise. Five, 10, 15. So it's 15 minutes past or quarter past. But what hour? Well, now I need to look at the hour hand. The hour hand is between the 11 and the 12. Therefore, I choose the smaller number. It is quarter past 11, okay? It's quarter past 11. It, it's done a quarter turn past 11 o'clock. Okay, it's quarter past 11. Who can help me out here? Ooh, tricky one. Pause the video, then work out the time and tell me how you know that is the time. Well, well done if you have said 25 minutes to two or 25 to two. Really impressed. If you didn't get that quite right, listen to me now. The minute hand is pointing to the left-hand side of the clock. That means we're talking about to the hour. It's how many minutes to the next o'clock time. Well, I now to work out how many minutes, sorry, I need to count anti-clockwise anti in fives until I get to the minute hand, okay? Count with me. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. It is 25 minutes to the next hour. But what hour? Now I must look at the hour hand. The hour hand is between the one and the two. When we're talking about past the hour, we choose a smaller hour number. But when we talk about to the hour, we choose the greater hour number. It is 25 to two. In 25 minutes, it will be two o'clock. Watch. In 25 minutes, it will be two o'clock. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Now it is two o'clock, 25 to two. So today you've got a few questions on reading the analog, analog clock correctly, okay? So the other thing you will need to do, okay, is to draw the time. Hopefully now you should see some clocks here. There we are. Ooh. So hopefully you can now all see that. Here I have got half past seven. Half past seven. So I need to draw half past seven. Well, I know, okay, when it's half past, I know the long minute hand will point directly at the six. So I'm going to use a ruler, okay? I don't want a wiggly line. I want a nice straight line. When it's Half past, the minute hand will point directly at the six, okay? Directly at the six. 
and it's half past seven. So now I need to think about where the hour hand will go. If it's half past seven, hmm. Well, I choose the smaller number when I talk about half past. So seven must be the smaller number. So the hour hand must go between the eight and the seven, and it will go directly in the middle of the two hour numbers when it's half past. So here I have drawn half past seven. Let me double check. Well, the minute hand's pointing directly at the six. Whenever that happens, it's half past. Half past what hour? I choose the smaller hour number. The hour hand's between the eight and the seven, so I'll choose the seven. Half past seven. OK, now let's look here. Ten to eight, ten minutes to eight. So it's to the hour. When it's to the hour, I know my minute hand's going to point to the left hand side. It will be on this side of the clock. So 10 minutes to, I need to count backwards from the 12. Five, 10. So I know my long minute hand is going to point directly here, okay? And as I said before, it's just a coincidence that at 10 to, it points at the 10. That does not happen, I can think of right now, or with any other time, okay? When you point the minute hand at the eight, it is not eight minutes to, okay? So anyway, the, we know it is 10 to eight. So the long minute hand is pointing directly here, five, 10, but it's 10 to eight. When I'm talking about to the hour, I choose the greater hour number. I need to choose the greater hour number, which would be eight. So the hour hand must go between the seven and the eight. It won't point directly at the eight, why it's not eight o'clock it will go just before and i draw my hand smaller because it's this short hour hand now i have successfully drawn 10 to 8. in 10 minutes it will be eight o'clock let me double check i'm right 10 to 8. so when the minute hand's pointing on the left i say it's to the hour how many minutes to the hour well five ten now I need to check the hour hand. The hour hand is between the seven and the eight. And when I talk about to the hour, I choose the greater hour number. Ten to eight. OK, so you're going to need to draw some times today as well. The other activity you might need to do is, well, we'll do, is do a word problem, OK, to calculate the duration. Let me read you mine. Miss Baldwin took a break at five past 11. So she started at five past 11. She finished at 25 past 11. How long was her break? I need to calculate the duration. OK, so when did it start? Well, it started at five past 11. I need to draw five past 11. Well, past the hour, I know my long minute hand is going to be going to the right hand side of the clock. It's five minutes past. Five. So my long minute hand will point directly at the one on the hour scale. Because that's where the minute hand points when it is five past. And it's five past 11. So when I talk about past the hour, I choose the smaller hour number. So I know it's going, the hour hand is going to between the 11 and the 12. So five past 11, it won't point directly at the 11. Why not? Well done, it's not 11 o'clock, it's five past 11. OK, so now I've drawn five past 11. If I want to be really good, I might write it here. Five past 11. Five past 11. When did she finish? Well, she finished at 25 past 11. So I'm still talking about past the hour. OK, that means the minute hand will point to the right hand side and it's going to point at 25 minutes past the so 25. I'm going to count in fives from the 12. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. OK, so the minute hand is going to point directly at the five here. So the long minute hand I draw now pointing directly at the five, but now I must still draw the hour hand. 
past 11. When it's past the hour, I choose the smaller hour number. So the small hour number will be the 11. So the hour hand will still go between the 11 and the 12. And it's 25 past, so it's not going to point directly at the 11. It's going to be a little bit further along, OK? And this is one of the, the mo more difficult things that will come with time, is knowing where to draw the hour hand. I'm not going to draw it directly in the middle because that's half past. It's 25 past. So I'm going to draw it around here, OK? And that is 25 past 11. But year two. OK, but I have not answered the question yet. I've drawn the start time. I've drawn the finish time. I still need to calculate the duration. OK, to do that, I'm going to count in fives. OK, until I get my minute hand, sorry, goes from here to the five. So I'm going to mark the five there. And I'm going to count in minutes because it's five past eleven and 25 past 11, OK? There's only a change of minutes. The hour was still 11 something, OK? So let me count up in fives, and I'll stop here. 5, 10, 15, 20. There was 20 minutes difference from the start time to the finish time. That means Miss Baldwin's break was 20 minutes. I've calculated the duration of the break. Anyway, as I've said, you have done very, very time. And this has, is your last time lesson where we'll focus a whole lesson on time. But we will, year two, be coming back to it throughout the year. It is difficult, it is challenging, but you've done absolutely brilliant. And as I said, Miss Baldwin and myself and Miss Head are really, really proud of you. Good luck with this worksheet. There is a little challenge question as well if you do complete the sheet. So if you would like to attempt that, have a go. Good luck today. Bye, guys.